morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming in again. I think we, we recognise that um, lockdown, the whole thing has been pretty brutal for a lot of people, and particularly for young people who haven't been in, in school, they haven't had the, the some of the sort of emotional yeah. support that you get naturally from being with, yeah. uh, with your peer group and... Uh, I think it's been hard for people. It's been hard, and I think the, this this money will go to the mental health support teams, who of course provide vital support to the teachers, the students, and the parents. They encourage that whole school approach of, of, of well-being and resilience, and of course, funding goes as well to the you know CAM services, the child and adult yes. mental health services, who've done an amazing job. Ellie, um, I, I know that you are um, an aspiring uh, medical student, you're, you're 16, um, from Cambridge. Uh, how did you find the lockdown and what are your kind of thoughts now moving into um, you know, the time to go back to school essentially? Is it something you're looking forward to? Are you anxious around? What do your friends say? That going back to school next week is going to be a very, it's going to be a shock to the system. Nobody has been in a proper social environment such as school since before the Christmas holidays and for such a long time to be away everyone has adjusted and become so resilient to change which is a positive thing but the adjustments have meant that we've been able to live with little social contact obviously I've been lucky because I've been able to see my friends for walks but obviously there are some people who can't do that because of where they live or their situation or vulnerability and for a lot of people, going back to school next week is causing some anxiety. Mm. I know that a few of my friends that I've spoken to are really anxious about going back. Is I think to to realise that some people will find it hard, and that's why I think what you say about uh, about stigma is so is so important. We must make sure that we de-stigmatise all of this, and that we talk about people's. Uh, mental health, but also we help people to be more mentally resilient. And that's that's why we're, we're, we're going to have yeah. these mental health uh, support teams going uh, into into schools, just to give people a bit of confidence. Know that you know if there is an issue, if they, if they really feel their head swimming with this whole thing, uh, that there's somebody there who's professional uh, who can uh, who can talk to them and, and help them, and their, and and, their, and and the teachers will also know that there's that extra. Mm -hmm. That extra backup, and that's what I think Alex is. Yeah, I, th I think you know a big, a, a big part of what I want to do is encourage this whole school approach to mental health. The idea that going back to school is not just about the academia; it's about the well-being of children. Um, you know, getting people back into their social circles, getting people back into the routine in a way that's steady, and I think that um, takes into account the difficulty that people have had. And from there, allowing them essentially from that position, hopefully, of being more comfortable to obviously do their academia and stuff. Yeah, I, I think the weird thing about the whole pandemic and lockdown was that initially and um, personally actually gave a little bit of a boost in my mental health um, the actual break from the busyness and kind of stress of everyday life at the time for me was my second year of A levels um, it actually provided me with a little um, break from that um, but after that I started to see um, the kind of it worsening from there I think you're losing out on so many key ingredients to positive mental health um, as a result of the pandemic, which none of us could have foreseen really. Um, things like the loss of routine. Um, I think a lot of us took for granted, kind of getting up for school, getting up for work, um, getting out of the house, seeing people. I think a lot of us took that for granted. And when that was taken away, you kind of realize how reliant you are on that yeah. and those kind of open mechanisms um, to keep in, uh, good mental health. Well, thank you, Ben. And I think actually you raised some good points there. I think it's reflecting a lot of the kind of things I've heard from, from speaking to other young people and the kind of research out there that the first lockdown, some people, everyone's different, some people found real benefit for their mental health, others found that difficult. But mm -hmm. as time's gone on, you know, the lack of routine, not being able to see, you know, friends and, uh, and people uh, that, that, that are close to you has that kind of wearing uh, effect on, on young people's mental health. Uh, Lana, you, you, thank you very much for, for, for joining. Uh, you, you've been working on, uh, on the farm, I guess, during uh, during lockdown. But but how, how have you how have you found it? I can't speak for the rest of the country, but in rural areas such as Devon and Cornwall, where I live, having that daily support nearby is of great importance. 
facilities such as CAMS are underfunded and understaffed. And even if you can get support through them, the journey times often make them unaccessible. I suppose that's something that links living rurally and the lockdown life is the isolation that comes with both of them. Well, I think, uh, you know, thank you so much for your, for your insight. I think this is why it's so important and why I've been pushing very hard and working with um, uh, government. I'm very grateful they respond this way for putting funding into this. And the 79 million is going to be going towards mental health support teams, which will be there as for early intervention, of course, for all ages of children. And of course, vitally for funding for CAM services. I think very important for us to say how incredible a job they do as well. CAMs have been under a lot of pressure, particularly because of the pandemic and this funding is really going there to help them. Um, it'd be great to hear from Sadia as well from Wales. I'm actually from Wales myself so I'm excited to hear how things are with you Sadia. I understand you're at university. Um, what kind of like tools have you been using and how have you looked after yourself during during this time? So good morning to you both. Thank you so much morning. for having me today. Um, for me I think you know taking um, breaks from social media because as young people we just love to use um, we love to use social media we love to be connected with our friends so taking breaks and um, looking after my um, my diet making sure that I'm sleeping eight hours a, a day looking mm. after um, like what I'm eating as well and also just speaking up when I am struggling speaking to my friends so it's really great to hear about the um, the mental health support teams that you're going to be putting into schools because that's what really helped you know I'm in a position now where yes I have anxiety but I know how to look after myself I know there's there's no that stigma it doesn't um, it doesn't kind of make me feel like I can't speak up. I know the importance of speaking up. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sadia. Well, that's, that's right. I mean, I think just having the, the, the courage and the knowledge that when you speak up, everybody, you know, this is, there's no problem with this. And uh, it, people, you, it's going to be welcomed. And, and because it's going to help your mental health, it's going to help your physical health, it's going to help your learning ability. Anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you for all of your time. Thank you. Thank you.